Welcome, my fellow dungeon masters, to the very first video of Puzzle Hustle. In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way on how to make a sliding disc puzzle, so you can surprise your players in your next session. I assure you, they are going to be intrigued, confused, and happy once they solve it. Before we start, I would like to let you know that all the puzzles shown on my videos and some more are available on my Patreon page, so in case you are in a hurry, you can just go there and download them. Plus, you will get to help the channel grow in quality. Without further ado, let's get into it. Normally, I will use Photoshop, but I know not everyone has it, so we are going to use Photopea a free online editor that has all the Photoshop tools, with the only downside of having some ads on the right side. Once we have Photopea open and running, the first thing we are going to do is search for wall images. In this case, I searched for cave walls DND, but it can be caves, bricks, metal textures, whatever fits your campaign and makes the puzzle more immersive to your experience. Take your time searching for an image with decent quality. Once you find one, save it in your PC. I recommend you to create a new folder so you have all your puzzle files together. Now, going back to the editor, click on the file and open your wall image. Once opened, Go to the left toolbar and right-click on Rectangle Selection, so you can see more options, and then choose Ellipse Selection. Click on your image and press Shift simultaneously in order to make a perfect round circle. Expand it until you have a large size. Once you get a large circle selection, press Ctrl-C to copy it and then Ctrl V to paste it and create a new layer. Then use the move tool to move the shape. Notice that every time you reach the center, a red line appears. Use this to play the layer right in the middle of the image. Then you are going to right click on your newly created layer and select blending options. Here, you're going to check the emboss and contour boxes. This is what is going to give us that nice and great effect, like the discs are part of the wall. I recommend using pillow emboss as a style, because it's what is looks more realistic to me. You can play around with the technique, depth, size and soften options until you get the result you want. In this case, I use 370% depth, 15 pixels in size, and 10 pixels in soften. When you're ready, press OK. Now comes a pretty easy step. Repeat everything a few times. So, go to your wall layer, use the ellipse selection, create a circle, and copy and paste a new layer. Apply the blending options, which are going to be automatically the same as the previous you used. And there you go. But actually, there is an even easier way to do this. Right click on your new layer and select Duplicate Layer. Now you have a fully complete circle. The only thing you need to do is resize it. Remember to press SHIFT while resizing it, so the shape can maintain its proportions. Also remember to place your layers right in the middle, where the two red lines merge. Repeat these steps as many times as you want. However, the more discs you have, the greater the chances your players get bored or frustrated so I recommend between 2 and 4 discs. The next step is optional, depending on how you want to set the puzzle. Personally, I like to add one last disc, and then cover it with a black circle shape. 
I use this to create different scenarios. For example, if my players fail to do the puzzle right, I will say something like, a dart flies from the hole in the center and you take 3 points of damage. Or if they got it right, the hole could drop a clue, a jewel or an item. This makes the challenge more versatile for you, giving you some flexibility and freedom to create, plan or improvise. Plus, it raises the stakes for the party, especially if they come from a hard encounter and they have low HP. Now we are going to make the dents or fissures. Once you finish the discs, go and select the ledger with the smaller one. Then go to the left bar and select the eraser tool. You can change the size of the eraser using the right click on your mouse. Place your pointer in the direction you want to make the fissure. Click and press shift at the same time while moving your mouse. This will allow you to make a straight line. Repeat this process, selecting each layer from the smaller one to the biggest one, so you can see where to stop erasing. Sometimes we are not going to be happy with the proportions. If this happens, like here, where I feel the trap hole is way too big. Don't worry, there is an easy fix. Go to your layers and press the control key and then click the layers you want to modify. This will allow you to select multiple layers. Then go to the move tool and resize and place the layers you need. The next step is also optional since you can use Roll20 assets instead. Go to the Shape tool, right-click on it and select Custom Shape. Then go to the bar above and select the shape you want. In this case, I chose a star. Then select the wall layer. We are going from the first layer to the newest layer. Place your shape, move it, resize it, and replace it as many times as necessary until you are happy with the results. Once you're ready, go to your new star layer. Right click on it and go to blending options. You are going to repeat the same process as the disks. Check the emboss and contour boxes and change the values until you get a nice engraved style. Also, if you want, you can change the color of the shape clicking on color overlay so you can give a blood or shine style to your shape. When you're ready, press OK. Then right click on the star and click rasterize so you can manipulate the shape easier and eliminate that blue line that surrounds it. After that, you are going to repeat this step for each layer with a disc, not counting the trap. You can add as many shapes as you want per disc to confuse your players. An easy way to go with the shapes is to use the sun, the moon, a diamond, the four elements and such, since they fell well in almost any lore, puzzle or campaign. You can also leave it blank and use a cryptic riddle or message involving cardinal points, colors, directions, locations, statues. It is up to you. You can be as creative as you want. Once you finish with the shapes, check that everything is in the right place. The way to do this is selecting the Move tool and rotate the disk. The disk should cover the shapes. If this doesn't happen, check your layers and reorganize them until all the pieces are in the correct position. The next step is to merge all the shapes with their respective disk. To do this, right-click on each shape and then press the option Merge Down. Now they are all fused together. We are going to do the same with the trap and the black circle layer, since we are not going to need them anymore.
Now that we only have five layers, we can build our puzzle. Right click on the first layer and click on select pixels to automatically select the shape of the image. Press Ctrl C to copy it, then go and click on file and create a new project. Change the name to something like puzzle wall and press create. Press Ctrl V to paste it. Notice that the project automatically gets the size of the image. Repeat these steps with every layer of the puzzle. Select pixels, copy, create new project, change the name, and then create it and paste it. The only difference is that when you paste the disks on the new project, you have to delete the background to make it transparent. Once you have the five different projects, go to File and export each one of them as PNG, so the images can be transparent. All the images will be inside your Downloads folder, but I recommend you to move them all to a different folder to keep them organized. Now we can finally build our puzzle. Go to Roll20, open your campaign, and upload the five images. I know this might take a while. Start by placing the wall and change its size to something you like. Mine, for example, is 12 by 10 pixels. Continue placing the disks from biggest to smallest. Change the size until it looks good. And then right click on the image, go to Advance and click on it's a drawing. That way you can move the image freely around the screen. Repeat this until you have all the pieces in position. Remember to send the wall image to the map layer and then remove the grid in the page settings. This way it's going to look even better. And there you have it. A great puzzle in under 15 minutes to enjoy with your players. Remember that all my puzzles are available at my Patreon, patreon.com slash puzzle hustle. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share, and leave your opinions in the comment section. See you next week.